In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us now call to mind our sins and be sorry for them as we prepare for these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask blessed and that you have I do, all angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May He forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Mercy, O oh Lord. Mercy, Lord. Let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that gathered at his right hand they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring forth for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved, and Jerusalem will dwell securely. And this is the name by which it will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm. 
Our response is, to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O Lord, make me know your ways. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. Response. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Good and upright is the Lord. He shows the way to sinners. He guides the humble in right judgment. To the humble, he teaches his ways. Response. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. All the Lord's paths are mercy and faithfulness. For those who keep his covenant and commands, the Lord's secret is for those who fear him. To them, he reveals his covenant. Response. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brethren, may the Lord make you increase and abound in love to one another and to all men as we do to you so that he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his sins. Finally, brethren, we beg and exhort you in the Lord Jesus that as you learn from us how you ought to work and to please God, just as you are doing, you do so more and more. For you know that you know what instructions we gave you through the Lord Jesus. The word of the Lord. Please may we rise for gospel acclamation. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us see, O oh Lord, your mercy and grant us your salvation. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, There will be signs in the sun and moon and stars, and upon the earth distress of nations, in perplexity at the roaring of the sea and the waves. Men fainting with fear and with foreboding of what is coming on the world. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, look up, raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. But take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the cares of this life. 
and that day will come upon you suddenly like a snare. For it will come upon all who dwell upon the face of the whole earth. But watch at all times, praying to have strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Lead questions for today. Question number one. Mention the five major seasons of the church and outline the key mysteries that we celebrate during each season. Question two. What is the one word or phrase that adequately captures all of today's readings? Question three. Jesus says, quote, take care or your hearts will be weighed down with debauchery and drunkenness and the cares of this life. Take care so your hearts may not be coercing or weighed down by debauchery and drunkenness. It's also called dissipation and the cares of this life. What does he mean? What is the danger? Number A, what is the danger that Jesus is warning us about? There's definitely a danger, which is why he says, take care. What is the danger he's warning us about? And B, how can we avoid this danger? Question four, with all the problems we have today in Nigeria, terrorism, terrorist insurgency, um, banditry, killer headsmen, banditry, kidnappers all over the place, widespread criminality, violence. Social media is awash with images and voices of violence all over the place. A few Nigerians today are able to sleep with both eyes closed, even with high walls and barbed wires. So with all the problems, then, of course, last night I was, there was a documentary on the price of cooking gas and kerosene and even the price of firewood and charcoal. The thing is very serious. We are in trouble. So with all these problems, coupled with bad governance, impunity, widespread executive lawlessness or impunity. We are witnessing all that. Those that cannot take it anymore are relocated. Even from here, we are losing some of our pillars. They are relocated. So under those such circumstances, what reasons can we still have as Christians for our annual Thanksgiving? Should we cancel an annual thanksgiving that there is no more reason in Nigeria to thank God? Or is there still a reason to thank God? Yes, Emmanuel. I want to answer question two. Yes. One word or phrase that adequately captures all of today's readings. Can you move it? It is be ready. One word that captures the readings, all the readings of today is? Be ready. Can you all say that? Be, be ready. ready. That's a phrase. Be ready. Okay. Give him a round of applause. <laughs> yes, Orahati. I would like to attempt question four. Yes. What readings can we still have as Christians for our annual Thanksgiving? I think for me, the first reason is that we have the salvation of Christ. We have a salvation. We have salvation, salvation in, in Christ. Christ Jesus. Okay, that's one reason. Hey, but look at them. Do you think that they, oh, they have salvation in Christ? 
Well, it's free to all for all that will accept it. So if they accept it, you have salvation. Okay, so it's just left for them to accept. But yes. the salvation has been offered for free. Free, yes. Okay, give, give a round of applause. And the other reasons is that we have the gift of the Holy Spirit with us. Despite all the problems and everything, the Bible says that he is the one that will give us peace. He's the one that gives us comfort. He's the one that will help us. So we are not left alone. We are, God has not left us to the problems and the challenges. He has given us the help. Are you the sure? Pressing of the Holy are you Spirit. Sure? Yes. And they are oppressing us like this. But we have this inner peace and joy. So they can't get to us, no matter what we see around. That he has not left us as orphans. Yes. Do you people agree that he has not abandoned us to ourselves? He has not left us as orphans. Oh no, Jesus is here. He has not left us as orphans. Oh no, Jesus is here. He will send his Holy Spirit. Oh yes, Jesus is here. He will send his Holy Spirit. Oh yes, Jesus is here. And also, Father, the fact that we are alive is by the grace and mercies of God. So when we consider the mercy and the grace of God that has preserved us, despite everything that is happening, we'll get to know that more than physical things, we have a lot to give thanks for. Are you for. saying that suffering life is better than no life? Yes. <laughs> eh? Even suffering life, life with pain, is it better than no life? Father, it is Job that said there is hope for the tree. There is, there is hope for even a dead tree at the scent of water, it will come alive. So life is something to be grateful for. And when there is hope, life, there, there is, is hope. hope. Oh, okay, yes. okay. From that point of view, give her a round of applause. <laughs> okay, Chidebere. Father, I want to um, support or actually that number. Father, because the first reading offers us the reason to still be thankful to God. The prophet Jeremiah, I believe he must have been speaking at the time the Israelites were going through the kind of situation we have today in the country. And he says, I will quote, Father, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and house of J Judah, in those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring forth for Please David. Please give him a round of applause. I am happy that, um, and he I'm happy that Chidebere read that and really understood what it is, what is saying. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord our God. When I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel. Exactly the same message of Isaiah is what Jeremiah was talking about. And it is at a time of tribulation for Israel. In fact, it was during the time of the Babylonian exile. When the children of Israel were at their lowest and they were losing hope. And it is part of the mission of the prophet to give the people hope. The days are coming. The people still remember what kind of a king David was. When I will raise a shoot from the house of David. And he will be a righteous judge. He will be a righteous king. Proverbs chapter 29 verse 2 says, When the wicked rule, the people groan. But when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. So we are in that kind of situation, and all we can do is dream of, reflect upon those days as promised by the Lord, when he will send a righteous king to deliver his people. Yes, uh, Father. And this, the interesting part is, 
is that he says, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will, be, will dwell securely. I think this gives us hope. And we can claim it, right? Yes. So for that, we have hope as um, children of God that the days are coming when these things shall also pass away and we will dwell in joy and in thanksgiving. You know, Amen. God. Give, Thank you for Give me a round of applause. <laughs> yes, Valentine. Valentine. I think I would uh, answer that question too. That the word is coming. And the the phrase, word is coming. coming. Please give him a round of applause. <laughs> because actually that is what Advent means. Advent means coming. So the entire season of, of Advent is about what? Coming. Coming. And all the readings we have are readings about the first coming and the second coming. So the, gospel, the first reading today, the one that Chidiberi just explained, is about the first coming of the King of Kings. The gospel we read is about the second coming in glory of the King of Kings. Give him a round of applause. And the phrase is, is the creation of the coming of Christ. Yes, the coming of Christ. And to await that coming, the third re reading, I mean the uh, first Thessalonians reading, he said how we should behave in between the first coming and the second coming. How we should behave. That is what the Thessalonians reading is all about. He still knows how to answer questions. Give, give, give him a minute. <laughs> Helen, you still have... Um, Father, I think I will just attempt question number one. I wanted to answer question number four. Um, the seasons of the church include Epiphany or Christmas season. Wait, which one? Epiphany or Christmas? Christmas, sorry, Christmas. Uh, Christmas season yeah. has Epiphany, epiphany. Inside. Yes, inside. Yes. And the mystery that we celebrate there, I think, is a joyful mystery. Um, then okay. after that, we have... Okay, what is the joyful mystery? The more specific. The mystery we celebrate is the birth of Christ. The birth of Christ, okay. and that brings joy to the world, as the angels announced. Okay. Yes, Father. Then the other mystery of the church, I mean, the season of the church is the Lenten season. The Lent. Yes. And um, there, we celebrate the Passion the mystery of the, the suffering of and death of, of Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Okay. Yes. Then a third mystery of the church is season. the season of the church is Easter. Thank you. <laughs> and there we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, which answers question number four. Jesus has told us his resurrection shows that there's light at the end of the tunnel. Okay. That no matter how things look bad, we should not lose hope okay. that, you know, there's light. Okay. So, Easter season, we celebrate the resurrection of Christ. Next. Yes. Then the fifth. No. One. Arithmetic, arithmetic, arithmetic. <laughs> Number four. Advent, which uh -huh. we are in now. Yes. And that's when we anticipate or celebrate the coming of the Lord anticipate Jesus. the coming. That yes. word is important. Anticipate, anticipate the coming. Correct? And yes. then the fifth now. Ordinary time of the year. Ordinary time of the year. What do we celebrate? <laughs> I need help. <laughs> she needs help. What do we celebrate? Um, uh, Mike. We, we give, give her 50% applause. 50%. Did, did she say what was number one? Number one, she said it was number four. So, Mike, put it properly. So that, if, if, let's see if you can get a hundred. Okay. I actually wanted to answer question number ah. three. But well, let me help her. Are you ready to help her? Yes, I'm ready to help her. Okay. 
The first season is the Advent season. Advent which, season. Advent season, which we are beginning today. Hey, what is the mystery? Oh, the coming of Christ Jesus. 20 over 100. Next. The next one is the Christmas season. Christmas, what do we celebrate? We celebrate the world made flesh, the birth of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. The fulfillment 40 of the promise. 40 over 100. Next. The next one is the, is the Lenten season. Yes, what do we celebrate? In the Lenten season, we celebrate the crucifixion and death of our Lord and our Savior Jesus before Christ. Before them, before crucifixion. The passion. Suffering. The, the passion. sufferings, crucifixion, and death of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. 60. The fourth one is the Easter, where we celebrate the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ and the hope given to us that we too will rise again on the last day. 80. And then, of course, the ordinary season of the time. What do we celebrate? We celebrate all the things, all the hopes, all the teachings, all the words of God that has been given to us during these four seasons. We are now supposed to walk out with them, work with them to achieve our salvation? Um, 90%. <laughs> we celebrate during the ordinary time the life and teaching and miracles of Christ and our growing in Christ. So the ordinary time which occurs before Lent and between uh, Pentecost. Pentecost and end of, uh, of the year, we are marching along, uh, learning the ways of Christ and how to live by the ways of Christ. Then it will take us to the Feast of Christ the King and the end of the year, and we start all over again. I mean, 90% is excellent, isn't it? Give him 90%. Uh, <laughs> Have we finished answering? No. Can I question? Question three. Can three. I answer question three, Father? That's oh, is that the one you want to answer? answer? Yes. Okay. Take care all your hearts to be weighed down. Sorry, man. Yes. With debauchery, <laughs> age has come. Drunkenness and the, care, and the cares of this life. What is the danger that Jesus is warning us about? First and foremost, Father, the danger is the danger of indifference. The danger is... Indifference. Indifference. That is about the greatest danger that is plaguing the world. Indifference. Today. Indifference. People have heard the gospel message. But they are indifferent to it. But they are indifferent to it. And because of the cares and the worries of this world, too many people are too concerned about the things of this passing world today, Father. People are looking for fame. People are looking for money. People are looking for husbands and wives and children, money, you know, whatever it is. And they forget, I was telling my children last night, that there is one thing we must remember, in spite of all our troubles here on earth, that this world is passing away. And that if we wake up every day and remind ourselves that Jesus may come tonight, or that this may be our last day on this earth, it will order our lives and our steps. If sincerely, we believe that there is heaven and there is earth and there is judgment. Now, because people don't seem to ever take these things as important anymore today and are fixated on the things of this world in pursuit of the passing pleasures of this world, that is why Jesus Christ had warned. So it's take care so that you are not weighed down by debauchery, drunkenness, and the cares of this world. These are the things that are plaguing our society today. Even the Christian community, unfortunately. And if we don't heed the warning of Christ Jesus and live as children and citizens of heaven, then when it comes again, we may not be ready. We may be found wanting. We may be called those who are goods that we put on the left side, rather than the sheep that we put on the right side. Now, how can we avoid this danger? The Catholic Church has given us many sacraments that will help us to avoid this danger. First of all, we need to be familiar with our scriptures. 
We need the sacrament of penance. We need the sacrament of Holy Eucharist. And we need, above all, to grow in the love of God every day of our lives and the things of heaven. Because he says, what will it benefit a man if he gains the entire world and loses his soul? What has man got to exchange for his soul? Not so you outline it again. One, be familiar with the word of God. The word of God that is the lamp for our feet and the light for our path. Be familiar with the word of God. Two, take seriously the sacraments of our church. I have constantly said, what distinguishes our church from other churches is not that we are holier. There are wonderful holy people in many churches. It is a sacramental life. If you say you are a Catholic and you don't have sacramental life, I really don't know what qualifies you to call yourself a Catholic. I really don't know. Because that is what makes a Catholic a Catholic. It's a sacramental life. The sacrament of the Eucharist. The sacrament of, uh, of, uh, of uh, confession, of uh, reconciliation. The sacrament of anointing when you are sick. This is what makes us. And this is what we place our hope in as the sanctifying instruments for our work with the Lord. Other groups have their, have their sanctifying instruments. This is our own. So we need to, thank you for reminding us, we need to take seriously our instruments of tested over 2,000 years from the very first set of disciples. The fact that something is not popular doesn't make it not authentic. In fact, today the more popular things are the ones we need to suspect whether they are authentic. So we need to keep saying this to ourselves and reminding ourselves. Okay. Give him a round of applause. Uh, somebody's been raising hand behind. Yes. Do you have a microphone? What question do you want to answer? Just to amplify what uh, Mr. Michael has said, uh, I want to look at debauchery, which our blessed Lord talked about. Debauchery means uh, excessive indulging oneself in sex, drunkenness, or drugs, like we have it in our societies today. And question number eight. Reckless, reckless, reckless consumption of, I mean, reckless resort to all kinds of pleasure. Yes. That's what it called debauchery. Yes. Debauchery is when you are sold out. Your heart is sold out yes. to, to pleasure. And human beings were not made for that. Yes. There is legitimate pleasure. There is irresponsible pleasure. And debauchery means people who have sold themselves to illegitimate pleasure. Now, what can keep us from staying awake? Question number A, that's uh, under question number three. What is the danger that Jesus is warning us about? Is love of the world, love of material things. And secondly, inordinate desires for the flesh is what our blessed Lord is warning us. And thirdly, we are not being aware of the presence of evil in our world. That, isn't that what Mike called ins indifference? indifference. indifference. Absolutely. You are indifferent to the presence of God. You are also indifferent to the presence of evil. Yes. If evil is present and people are operating as if they do not know that we are in the midst of a rotten environment. Yes. And, and now, question number B, how can we avoid the danger? Now, Mr. Mike has mentioned the sacrament beautifully. So it's through repentance, constantly amending our ways. Conversion is one of it. That's to stay awake. That's what will keep us awake, to constantly amend our lives. And number two, a virtuous life, a holy life, all right? And also reconciliation with God and with one another. All right, is one of it. 
Also, obedience, which Mr. Mike talked about, obedience to the word of God, the precepts of God. By studying the Bible, we get to become acutely aware of the precepts of God. So, and also arms giving, that is what we are here to do today. By giving arms in support of the church and also giving arms to the poor. This will keep us awake. We will stay awake and wait for our blessed Lord. Thank repentance. you. Repentance. Ongoing repentance. Because unfortunately we see in every day, there has to be the attitude and the disposition of ongoing repentance. Um, a Christian is one who is adept at recognizing that he or she has fallen. That's why they say the saint is one who recognizes that he has committed a sin seven times a day. The one who is arrogantly unaware can commit ten sins and he says, I'm a good man. I'm a good one. That is part of the insensitivity. Lack of awareness. The Christian must be aware. And by the time you allow the word of God to be the lamp of your feet and the light of your path, you will be aware. Because the word of God will convict you. The word of God is a double-edged sword. And as you familiarize with yourself with the word of God, the word of God will not fail to convict and chastise. While also encouraging you to go to the Lord because he is merciful and gracious. But he will, it will first of all convict and chastise you. Then of course the sacraments. Then of course charity. Works of charity. Then generosity towards God. Generosity towards your neighbor. I mean, how can, we be not, how can we not be generous towards God who has everything? I mean, in the last uh, one and a half years or two, since COVID came, people have just all of a sudden expired. Then you hear of somebody. And you know, it is, it is the big people we hear. Uh, the smaller people that are expiring, we don't get to hear, right? People will just expire. God's time, you know some people who expired. Dr. Tao. You know some people who expired. Eh, just expired. Before, the, what, before what we thought was the expiry date. Eh? Because you see, if you see somebody and the person is 45 years old, you would think that expiry date is still up to 40. Then before that expiry date of yours, <laughs> you don't know that there is a hidden expiry date. And somebody just... Unfortunately, in our environment, the expiry dates are no longer have become contentious because somebody traveling from Kaduna to Abuja that suddenly expires in the hands of uh, bandits. We are seeing all that, too. but they say the greatest lesson of history is that human beings don't learn from history. Every day we are seeing all this, and then we are making plans and doing things and hoarding as if we'll be there for the next 50 years. May the Lord help us. Okay, quickly now. Advent is a period of joyful expectation of the fulfillment of the promises of old. A season, Advent is a season pregnant with new possibilities. Why do we talk about pregnant with new possibilities? When the present is problematic, as we are now, every serious Nigerian sleeps and dreams of a better Nigeria, right? Even the most corrupt Nigerian is thinking praying and dreaming of a better Nigeria, isn't it? Because the corruption, his or her corruption doesn't make Nigeria better. He or she goes to other countries that are not as corrupt, that are better managed, and sees that, ah, see how organized they are. And sends his or her children to those places. So somehow, there is a wish for a better Nigeria. There is a wish for a better life. So we are all looking out for new possibilities, a new world. It is a season of expect excitement and longing for something refreshingly new when today's life is, is hell on it. I have a German friend, a white man, a German friend who was here, who worked here for a couple of years and it went back. And he's in Germany, and he, a few weeks ago, he was making jest of me and said that, uh, he, 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 
that he doesn't think that any Nigerian should go to hell. I say, why? He said, Kai, your life in Nigeria already, he thinks it is a half hell. <laughs> now, that half hell is for both the rich and the poor. Can you imagine what it means, Dr. Tao? Can you imagine what it means if you have to be going everywhere with kill and go policemen with gun? Can you imagine what it means that if you are coming to church here now, if not that I don't allow gun here, one person will be standing there holding gun. Do you really feel, will you feel, will, will you really be comfortable that you cannot go, you can't go and visit your friend, uh, 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 Ambassador Epang, you cannot go and visit him without carrying somebody with gun. And while you are chatting with him, maybe you want to go and tell him something, whatever, the guy is, is eavesdropping, he's standing by. Because he cannot afford to leave you alone with him in case he hurts you. <laughs> what kind of life is that? What kind of life? I mean, me and Richard were saying a few days ago, I said, can you imagine that even the children of the rich, they lose their childhood? I mean, so you are following me everywhere. Police following me every, everywhere. Ah uh ah. -uh. I used to see when I was in your place, I, I used to see some big people. Uh, uh, taking a stroll around with gun totting police behind them. It, it still happens, Abby. Yes. <laughs> taking a stroll at 7 a.m. Is that life? We have created a hell and we are spewing in our mess. So we need to look forward to something better, isn't it? Where the president of Nigeria will come out of that fortress called Asovila. Come out of that fortress and stroll to uh, Yakubu Gawon uh, Crescent and stroll and greet children on the road. May it happen in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yes, Advent is a time to look forward to something different. I mean, you, you saw last year how uh, is it Boris Johnson or no, they were coming on before him, was jogging and one person fell him down. And they began to, they wanted to arrest the man. The man said, ah, this is road that I am jogging in, and he too is jogging. So if, uh, if, if he didn't take enough care, and, he, and my body hit him, and he fell down, and you, what's my problem? That shows a society where there is equity. Boris Johnson himself carries his bag in his bicycle and goes to the supermarket, buys the thing he needs to buy, and rides his ba bicycle home. There may be one security person behind him, but that's a society, an equitable society. The kind of society we have created, even the local government counselor will need soldiers to go around with him. As you lay your bed, so you lie on it. But I want to let people who think that this is life, people who are even priding themselves, let, I want to let them know that this is, it's an idiotic life. It's a foolish life that you would have to be having a battalion of people for you to go and visit your in-law. That is no life. That's no life at all. Advent is a time to look forward to something different. Something different from the pains and tribulations we have been experiencing. They say, you know, if you have people hanging around your house wanting to come and eat, rather than raise higher fence, expand your dining table. Have you read that before? Expand your dining table, not expand your walls. If you expand your dining table, you will be safer, my brothers and sisters. It is cheaper to extend your dining table than to make high walls and barbed wires. But we have chosen the other one. And the walls we get, we continue to get taller. And the electrified fences will continue to get more complex. And yet... Because you are going to come out of your electrified fence now. The cheaper way is to include everyone. If we include everyone, we ourselves will be safer. Advent is a time to anticipate a new world order. It is a time to dream dreams of the new heavens and the new earth. Where God shall reign, as Jeremiah says in our first reading. In the hearts of all people, where righteousness and integrity shall be at home, where justice and peace shall flow like water. 
As at Advent, we celebrate the generations of faithful people in Israel and elsewhere who waited with profound longing for the coming of the Savior. The heroes and the heroines of faith and hope who waited on God through the most trying times of conquest and enslavement and deportation to Babylon and desecration of the temple. I want you to know that when the, Babylon, when the Babylonians came and when they destroyed the temple, it was like the end of the world for them. At Advent, we celebrate our own deepest longings for a time when Christ's work on earth will be complete and God will be all in all. Our dreams and our aspirations for the reign of integrity, justice, and peace in our country and in our land. This is the kind of dreams that sustained Isaiah. Isaiah lived at a troubled time, but he had dreams like this. That sustained Jeremiah. That sustained Baruch and Zephaniah and Zachariah. These are the prophets we read about during Advent. This is the dream that sustained John the Baptist. This is a dream that sustained people like Martin Luther King Jr. And this is the dream that we ourselves should have today. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we are going to see the king soon and very Oh, soon. Soon and very soon. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We are going to see the king. There's no crying there. We are going to see the king. Oh, there's no crying there. We are going to see the king. There's no crying there. We are going to see the king. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We are going to see the king soon and very soon. And soon and very. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We are going to see the king. Come and join the train. We are going to see the king. Oh, come and join the train. We are going to see the king. Will you come and join the train? We are going to see the king. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We are going to see the king soon and very Oh, Sunan. Sunan Berry. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We are going to see the king. Oh, what a joy. We are going to see the king. Oh, what a joy. We are going to see the king. Oh, what a joy, we are going to see the king. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we are going to see the king. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. Soon and we are going to see the king. Soon and very soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we are going to see the king. So, what is our task during Advent? What is our focus during Advent? Advent is 
A time for sober reflection, it is characterized by wakefulness, by watchfulness, by vigilance. The three words are very close to each other, but slightly different. Wakefulness, watchfulness, vigilance, prayer, fasting, penance. At Advent, we reflect on the meaning of the incarnation. The goal and mission of the Christian church in the period in between, which is what is described in our first reading, 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. At Advent, we reflect on the meaning and purpose of our individual Christian lives. Mike talked about people who are living in sensitive lives because they have lost the meaning of their lives. They, they, they do not know what, why we are here. I mean, when you take the social media and see all the debauchery that has been traded, all the debauchery, and the things that are trending all over the place. That's why Christians should be, beware of what is trending. Beware of all that is trending. Because those who are now directing the world often have no purpose beyond what they can eat and play with in this world. But we have an eternal purpose. We have an eternal destination. And we must constantly put that goal before us as we make our choices every day. I mean, and I keep saying a lot of people who say they are Christians, they are believers, are constantly behaving like teenagers. You know, it is teenagers that, that are afraid of being alone. Teenagers have a hard time being alone, meaning others are going in one direction to say, no, I don't believe in that direction. Teenagers have that problem. But when people become adults, you should be able to say, you all may be going in that direction, but this is where I am staying because according to my own purpose, I cannot join you. Advent is a time for focusing. Focusing our attention on the goal, which is what? Eternal life. Focusing our eyes firmly on the prize. What is the prize? Jesus Christ. At the beginning of Advent, we read of the terrible signs and images of human suffering and cosmic disorder, which will precede the end time. Luke chapter 21, part of which we read today. Christians are, however supposed to understand the end time events positively, not to be frightened. Jesus paints such a gloomy picture of the end time, not to paralyze us with fear about the future, but to influence our lives in the present. Can we say that together? Those words in red. Not to paralyze us with fear about the future, but to influence our lives in the present. The frightening events are to energize us into action. The purpose of speaking about the future is so that the present may be affected how? Positively. Whereas the end time events spell doom and gloom for non-believers, for the unfaithful and those whose hearts are hardened, the end of the world's gloomy events, it is a day of liberation for the faithful. The faithful shall await the end time with what? Confidence. He says when these things begin to happen, stand erect and hold your heads high. Walk on springs. Because your liberation is near. Jesus says, stay awake, be vigilant, look reality in the face, and conduct your lives accordingly. Now, the reality we look in the face, some of them may be terrorism, terrorist insurgency, banditry. Some of the reality we look in the face may be personal. It may be failed marriages. It may be problem children, challenging children. It may be failed contracts, failed career. They may be the realities we face, we look in the face, and yet we hold our heads and say, Jesus has overcome the world. That's why he says in John 16, 33, in the world you will face all kinds of problems, but do not be afraid. I have overcome the world. I mean, people who do not believe in this, people who do not really believe in eternal life, really believe in Jesus Christ, really believe in the fact that at the end he will overcome. Now, wow, how do they manage to live from day to day? How do they manage to live with all the problems of the world every day? I mean, if you are a man that goes to marry one idiot of a woman, or you are a woman who goes to marry one... Make me supply the thing now. <laughs> one apology of a man. And then you live like that for many years. If you don't have faith in the fact that at the end it shall all be well. 
if you do not believe Romans chapter 8 verse 18 that all things turn unto good for those who, who love God then what, what, what kind of life are you living? St. Paul says if our hope in Christ were for this world alone then of all creatures not only human beings of all creatures meaning including lizard and goat of all creatures you are to be most pitied. For true Christians, the end time is not the end. It is the beginning of genuine freedom. For true Christian, true disciples of Christ, the end is not a moment of terror and judgment. It is the moment of salvation. In Advent, we prepare for the celebration of the first coming of Jesus Christ in humility and weakness, right? Born in a manger. And we anticipate his second coming in majesty and power. We celebrate the prophecies of Isaiah and Jeremiah and Baruch and Zephaniah and Zachariah and John the Baptist about the Messianic times. We reflect on the words of John of Jesus Christ and of St. Paul about the required conduct for the subjects of the kingdom in the period in between. Whether this period in between lasts for 10,000 years or 1 million years, that's not the issue. Doesn't matter. But as we live in the period in between, how are you conducting your lives? Don't worry about when the world will end. There are people who preoccupy themselves about calculating when the world will end. Jesus has already told us that that's a waste of time. The time in between the two comings of Christ is a time of Christian community and Christian activity. That's the time for us to build community and to work for a better world. Evil still pervades the land. Darkness still holds many people captive in the form of hatred and enmity and unforgiveness and ethnic prejudice and social injustice. If I ask now that how many people here are living with ethnic prejudice and unforgiveness, some, somebody will say, not here and looks there. Plenty, unfortunately. I hope that uh, Helen used to be the advocate for people here and say, not here. <laughs> not here. Mm -hmm. Corruption, sexual immorality, Greed and avarice, wickedness and hatred, idolatry and occultism. By the way, those of you who are adults in your 50s and 60s, who have young people, 40s, 50s, 60s, just know that there is more occultism among our young people today than you knew with your grandfather. And I have kept saying to young parents that please admit, humbly admit that you do not know where, where your children are. You do not know what your children believe. You don't know where your children are. You don't know what your children believe. You don't know the kind of life your children are living. You see your children an average of one or two hours a week. And their mentors on social media see them 24 hours every day. And we are told today that apart from, apart from the fact that 50, 40 to 50 percent of our young people are on, we, on uh, one hard drug or the other. We will be the weakest of them. But that there are all kinds of plus plus. There is, Dr. Tower, do you know Yahoo Plus? Have you heard of it? Yahoo, Valentine, how did you hear of it? <laughs> Ritual. So, occultism added to the criminality of Yahoo is called Yahoo Plus. Then I'm told that prostitution among young women in the university and other places, there is yeah, a prostitution plus, meaning prostitution added, I mean, occultism added to prostitution among our young people. The kind of thing that when I was born 64 years ago, I never heard about. So things are happening and are terrible. And there's a lot of darkness in our environment. Now, if you think that you are doing evil, those of us who are Christians, we better repent and live the life of Christ because if you think you are doing evil, your child may, your child may, may double the thing. And what they are often doing is surpassing their parents to the extent that you yourself will be shocked that this is possible. So let, let us repent now and begin to model good behavior for our children. Then, of course, there is terrorist insurgency and banditry and kidnapping and sundry criminality all over the place. 
In this time in between, there will be widespread iniquity, debauchery, and corruption. But the Christian is called upon to be a sign of contradiction. The Christian is called to bear witness to what? Can you read? To love in the midst of hate. And truth in the midst of falsehood. And peace. And light in the midst of darkness. And faith in the midst of doubt. And hope in the midst of despair. And life in the midst of death. St. Francis of Assisi left us this legacy of promoting peace in the midst of trouble, promoting love in the midst of hate. Yes, Advent is a time of commitment to the cultivation and promotion of such values and virtues of the kingdom as what? Holiness and righteousness, prayer and watchfulness, love and sacrifice. Peace and solidarity, mercy and compassion, forgiveness and acceptance. So in summary now, to prepare for his second coming, Jesus admonishes us to one. One, stay away. Two, and to watch, like I say, means to be wise, to be sensitive, to have understanding, to be perceptive, to have the vision, to care and to be concerned, to be aware and to be sensitive. The Lord will come back in glory for sure. We do not know when, but in the meantime, we must be ready. We should begin our faith journey with the end in view. If we are faithful to Christ and the values of his kingdom, when these things begin to happen, we will not fret, we will not be afraid. What will we do? We'll be able to stand erect and hold our heads high. We'll be able to be firm amid the chaos of the world. We'll be able to wait with confidence for Jesus' second coming. You know the way they say that if on top of the sea, of the ocean, there is turbulence, but if you go down, what happens? There is calm. What the Lord wants us to, be, how he wants us to behave is to be calm. Go down. Live a life of depth. Don't live superficial life. Superficial life, you are like on top of the ocean. There is a lot of turbulent waves. But if you live a life of depth, and those a lot of mystics of our church live such life. One of them was um, uh, the, 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 the St. Teresa of Avila, St. John of the Cross, Julian of Norwich, Julian of Norwich that popularized that saying, it shall be well. It shall all be well. All manner of things shall be well. Can we say it together? It shall be well. Two, it shall all be well. Next, all manner of things shall be well. Please read about, read about Julian of Norwich. 15th century uh, mystic woman, Julian of Norwich in England. We will be shut out of the kingdom of love, peace, and eternal glory if today we go on living senseless lives, getting consumed in the rat race, pursuing blind and, 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 and senseless uh, uh, pleasure and defining ourselves with adultery, defiling ourselves with adultery and fornication and reckless consumption, uh, killing ourselves over power and prestige position. Now, these days, when election is coming, eh, how many policemen were mobilized to Anambra during the last election? 35,000. I mean, this country has only about 350 policemen, right? We have only about 350,000 policemen to take 35,000 to one state for election. Then, soldiers were mobilized. Oh. Civil defense were mobilized. Oh. Immigration, uh, hey, uh, OK, DSS, just for election. In fact, the number of people, um, the security people mobilized there, there are a good percentage of the people who voted. Because not many people voted. So the number of people who went, if all the security people had voted in Anambra, they would have constituted a formidable, uh, formidable opposition. The only way to prepare for an unpredictable future is what? To be faithful in the present. It is to make ourselves ready by being active agents of love and justice and peace and reconciliation. It is to be daily conscious that this world is not our home, that this world is passing away, and that we have an eternal home where, where we shall be with Christ.
There is indeed only one gift at Christmas. Never mind all the cards. And some of the cards these days don't even have the name of Jesus Christ. I told people, reject those cards. You buy a card that does not have the image or the name of Jesus in it, put the image of Jesus yourself. Write Jesus is born in the card. Don't send to people cards that are generic. Do you understand? And don't send me a card that is generic. Seasons greetings. So what? There is something that Christians are celebrating. What is it? The incarnation. Don't allow yourself to be dragged into celebrating Christmas as a secular feast. As just a seasonal, seasons greetings. It's part of the work of the secularists to de-emphasize the incarnation. There is one gift at Christmas. What is that gift? Jesus Christ. And Advent prepares us to receive that gift. Scripture passages for reflection. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. Isaiah 9, 1 to 6. Stay awake for you do not know the day when your master will come. Matthew 24, 37 to 44. The night is almost over, Paul says to the Romans, chapter 13, verse 11 to 14. The night is almost over. It will be daylight soon. Let us give up all the things we prefer to do under the cover of dark. And 2 Peter, chapter 3, verse 4 to 14 says, We await a new heaven and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, be eager to be found without spot or blemish. Heavenly Father, we thank you, we praise you, we glorify your holy name for your many blessings. Thank you for your love and your goodness. Thank you for the new season of the church, the new liturgical season. Thank you for Advent. Thank you for the good news of the coming of the Messiah. That as we live through tribulation today, as we live through trials, as many of our countrymen and women are suffering severely due to widespread insecurity, joblessness, broken uh, down social system and infrastructure. As individuals suffer on account of poverty and failed marriages and failed uh, uh, children, challenging children, all kinds of problems, thank you for the good news that the righteous king is coming. Thank you for the good news that Jesus will come and will emerge triumphant. Thank you for the life that you have given to us. And today as we give thanks to you, receive our thanksgiving. Amen. And bless us more. Particularly bless our country with peace. Amen. And in spite of the challenges of our country, sustain us to be able to live lives of dignity. To the glory of your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's rise. I believe... In one God. Let us, let us now turn to God with all our petitions for the Christian church.
for the world and for our troubled country, Nigeria, that in his love and mercy, he will intervene in our individual and corporate affairs and help us overcome our present economic, political, and especially security challenges. For the Holy Father, Pope Francis, for the bishops, and for Christian leaders at all levels, that they may give witness to Jesus' message of love and hope with lives of service, sacrifice, and compassion, even as we live through difficult time. We pray, O oh Lord. For all Christians everywhere, that as Advent season begins, we may truly prepare for God's visitation in Christ with lives of holiness and justice, and that the poor, the sick, the disabled in our society may look up to us Christians and find hope and support. We pray, O oh Lord. For individual members and families in the Loxterra chaplaincy and community, that as we celebrate our community thanksgiving and love feast day today, that the good Lord, who is the giver of all good gifts and always inspires us to raise the resources necessary for the mission of the church, that we, he may share his abundant blessings on all who are part of this celebration and accept our thankful hearts. We pray, O oh Lord. Lord hear our prayers. For the poor, the unemployed, the sick, the handicapped, the aged, and for those most affected by today's security challenges in Nigeria. By the merits of today's Eucharistic celebration, May they experience a change in fortune and especially find the support they require in their circumstances. We pray, O oh Lord, oh, yeah, our prayers. for the success of the evangelization and leadership development programs of Loxterra Leadership Foundation and for the intentions of its partners and benefactors. We pray, O oh Lord. Let us, dear friends, now pray in silence for our personal needs, that the Lord will meet us at our various points of I will make my heart your dwelling place. I will build your throne in my life. Come, Father. Father. turn and ask for the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Almighty Father, you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. 
help us to have confidence in your unchanging love for us. And as we bring our thanksgiving offerings today, may we receive many more gifts from you than we could ever ask for or imagine. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Amen. Accept, we pray, O oh Lord, these offerings we make. Gathered from among your gifts to us, and may what you grant us. To celebrate devoutly here below, may it gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him. The Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of the nativity so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord. You are the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of our faith, save us. For by our cross and resurrection, we have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Ignatius, our Archbishop, Anselm, his auxiliary, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. By the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let's bow at each other, wish each other the peace of Christ. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. May this mystery, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and to hold fast to what endures. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Holy and may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. This Mass is ended. Let us go in the peace of Christ.